I'm Brent, and welcome to the vlog. This week's topic is film, specifically editing. Editing is a process that can make or break a raw piece of film. It won't matter how good or bad your filming process has been, if your editing process doesn't translate from concept to final design, it can reverberate across your whole film and ruin the final product. So this makes it a good idea to incorporate different levels of understanding of editing into the classroom. This can help students wanting to get ahead with their productions and also allow for students who are having difficulties in grasping the concept or general inspiration a chance to see another side of the standard editing process. This week's assessment task will take focus at a late year 8 to early year 9 level based on the VCAA, which is the Victorian Curriculum Assessment Authority. The task will introduce a new concept to the students, while allowing teachers to be able to properly assess where students are at as far as editing and editing programs are concerned. It will introduce the new concept that can also be expanded upon by students with advanced knowledge, allowing to see growth and understanding of the topic in general. The assessment will look at cloning. This is where a student takes a raw film of themselves with the camera set at a fixed point in the room and they move around the room at different intervals where they can cut the film up and make it look like there's multiple versions of that student in a room. The process can go as simple as having just two people in a room. Something a little like this. Once edited, the result will look like this. Let's watch the process. And thank you, Brent. All right, so here we are. We're in Adobe Premiere Pro, and we've got our raw video footage just here in the timeline. What we need to do now is cut it up and ready it so that I can clone myself in that video. As you can see, the video is one clip, and I'm on left-hand side doing my first bit, moving over to the right hand side to complete it. Ideally, we want them layered on top of each other so that we're not going to have too much of an overlapping effect, but it's going to look like I'm talking with myself. But first, let's get rid of that moving part in the center and have two separate clips ready to go and layer on top of each other. We'll just grab the razor tool just off to the side here and position the timeline just before I move which should be just about here. And I'll just click just on the clip just to make the cut so that there's now two separate clips. I'll move it along again just so that I'm repositioned and ready to go. So I'll just cut the clip once more and that makes three separate clips. The middle one is the one that we don't need because that's just me moving to my next position. So I'll just select it by clicking on it and pressing delete. Now what I need to do is bring the video clip up to video 2 line in the timeline and the audio of that same clip down to audio 2 line so that we can bring both along and lap over video 1 and audio 1. Now you will get most likely video clips to be a little lengthier than others like this one here but that's fine we can trim that off at the end because it's most likely you just sitting there waiting for the other person to finish talking when they actually have. Okay so what we need to do now is get a garbage mat and that's what we'll be using to make ourselves cloned. Basically what it does is it gets rid of well, it will get rid of this half of the video and show the other underlying layer, which is where I'm standing also. So to do that, we need to go over to the Effect Toolbar and we'll just go into the search engine and put in GAR and bring up these three results. 4, 8 and 16 point garbage mat. Now, they all have a varying amount of points to them, as you'd assume. Now, what is a point? Let's just enable the four point because that's all we'll need for this level of matting. 
Now, other programs may refer to it as masking, but Premiere refers to it as a garbage mapped. So you may be familiar with the term. To enable it, just make sure you have one of your clips selected, and I'll double click on the four point garbage mat. That gives you a bit of a green line underneath the clip that I have selected. And if we have a look at the effect control layout, you can also see it up here, four point garbage mat. And you also have the points, top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left. Now to enable that mat, we just need to click on the wording and you can see why it's called the four point garbage mat because we have four points to add it. If we were to do the 16 point or the 8 point they'll add extra points along these lines here but really we just need the four point for this style. Now let's have a look and as you can see as I'm pulling it back the other video that we've got layered on top of the first video is being revealed. I'll just bring it back to about this point here and let's play that as it is right now. We do see a bit of a scene but we'll ignore that for now and let's see how that works out for us. Okay, so that worked perfectly. Although, as you can see, this one's still playing because this one had already finished. So we can cut that up now if we'd like. It's really about fine tuning at this stage. Like I said, let's cut that video down. That's the first point of fine tuning. This is the point where we'd really like to see the students during the activity really shine and show off their knowledge about actual editing. They can just perform the task the way they'd like but or the way it's been set out which is this is at its most basic but if they start clipping trips, uh, clips so that they're aligned properly with each other and if they start going into a bit more finer details trying to get rid of this scene for example they can do that. Let's do that now just to show an example of that. So what I'll do is I will click on this top cliff here, the second clip, and I will grab I'll just type three into the search bar and bring up the three-way color corrector. I'll double click on that once again and that is then applied to that clip then we can actually start editing the colors and just changing them so that they blend in a bit more with the actual second clip. If it's not the colors that we really need to be focusing on, we can ignore that. I'll just delete that. And bring up PRO, which brings up the Pro Camp. This here focuses on brightness, contrast, hue and saturation. To properly edit these we can mainly focus on brightness, contrast and saturation. Hue really changes the colour that defines the shot so it's not really something that we need to touch. After playing around with that just for a little bit we can start to get a bit more of a blending between our videos. This clip here is one that I've actually blended a bit more. I've added a bit more time to it so that it's it plays a bit a bit more in tune with each other and it's not so bright, so it's too washed out. So let's have a look at that one. As you can see, the seams basically gone. And that's something that I'd like to see from a student doing this activity. They're trying to do their best to work with the tools that they have available to them. If they don't go that far, then that's fine. Then you'll know where to work from. But if they do, then good on them. They're looking for more to do. Okay, let's expand upon that activity. 
And instead of duplicating myself just the once, I'm going to duplicate myself six different times in the one scene. I've currently set up my pre-production layout, which includes six different activities that I'll be doing during that one take. Let's take a look. And here's my scene set up. I have my camera set up on a bit of an elaborate set. Preferably in a classroom you'd have a tripod. But for this, this'll do. I've also got all of my six activities ready to go. During the shot, I'll be coming in, interacting with each one of these activities for roughly 20 seconds in my head. I've got each setting marked with a little tack here. This will make sure that I don't interact too much with the other activities so that editing isn't going to be too much of a hassle. I've also made sure during my shot I'm going to be using lighting. This lighting isn't elaborate at all. It's just the house lights. What I've done is I've closed the curtains off so that we don't have any interference from natural light. Whilst natural light is brighter, it's going to put too much of a harsh shadow onto the scene. That will impact my editing results with having shadows interacting with other shots that I need to cut into. Okay, so here it is, my full film of me in six different spots in one room trying to pull off a multiple people in one shot effect now as you can see on screen at the moment I am starting to do my cut up get rid of all of the moving in between sections I'm also starting to get an idea of how long exactly each part was held for as I moved around the room during this uh, time, I did find that one of my activities, the activity using the remote control car, actually ended up being a lot shorter than all the other activities, which went for roughly a minute. Now, what I did to combat that was basically just to remove that part altogether leaving me down to only five duplicated me's. Now, if that wasn't enough, I ended up coming up against one other challenge whilst doing this, and that is a time constraint. Unfortunately, once again, time ended up getting the better of me, and the section where I am on the, the larger laptop on the main couch I ended up having to cut out of the scene. Unfortunately that was once again due to time constraints and I would have loved to have completed that at a later stage. So I ended up only having four me's in one scene at a time but that's what happens when you do film or anything production wise. You have lots of challenges to come up ahead of you. In this last section of clip you may see some moving dots. Now that's basically using the points at a keyframe rate. I'm just animating them as the video progresses. It's something a little more advanced and unless your students know the idea of keyframing I would tend to steer clear of it. But without further ado, let's take a look at the final result. Okay, now that we've had a look at the assessment, let's have a look at some resources that could be used in conjunction with the assessment, and not just the assessment, but any editing project. YouTube is a great place for students and teachers alike to look at some more visual tutorials and development processes. Students should really take a, their time to choose their words in the search category quite carefully using highlighted words like tutorial, adobe, premiere will bring up some great results. Not only is it great for tutorials but it can also be helpful with initial inspirational and 
just general ideas. A YouTuber by the name of Freddie Wong, who develops some high quality editing on a budget and gives you also some great behind the scenes looks at his own productions from start to finish. For me personally, I got my inspiration for this week's activity from a violinist by the name of Lindsay Sterling, who clipped a cloned version of herself to play alongside with her alternate self. It was a well thought out idea, so I thought to include that in this week's activity. YouTube in general is a great starting point to get an idea off the ground with its tutorials and ideas. However, students can find it a little easy to stray from their initial search and start looking at videos unrelated to the task, which I've found myself doing on many occasions. So setting a strict time limit would be advised. Moving one step further from there is to take a look at the actual Adobe official website. This website is a great place to start if you're not too familiar with the Adobe products. It can help you as far as community forums go. They're all monitored, so they'll be great for students to use as well. Guides are also available on the website, as well as frequently asked questions that can help students really get to grasp with the technology that has been presented to them. For some great inspiration that doesn't even need to be on the internet, you don't need to go any further than DVDs within the classroom. DVDs and Blu-rays come out with some great special features lately. You only need to look as far as films like The Matrix or Lord of the Rings or even Avatar to see that there are discs packed full with special features. These extras, whilst they're way beyond budgets of a school or even a student. They're giving ideas to students, something to inspire them to maybe lean towards or just get their projects off the ground with some initial ideas and concepts. Whilst for some students, tutorials and even special features on a DVD are more than enough to get some inspiration going in a classroom. For some students, being able to see what their peers of past have actually accomplished with the tools that they've been given in a classroom is even more invigorating. And an excursion to Melbourne's Acme building would be more than enough to inspire a lot of young minds. Acme is a way of showing independent development films at low budgets in the Melbourne city. For general media studies information, students don't need to look any further than IMDB. It's the database that has it all. It has information on their favourite films and films that they're studying. It also gives information about actors as well as directors of the films that they're looking into. It's a great source of information. So there's the final result. As you can see, over the course of this video, I've done several different examples as to how the cloning process can be implemented and it allows students to have that growth period. The final result that I had just then was more of an advanced stage, whereas previously in the earlier stages of the video, we've got the beginner stage, but it's something that can be still expanded upon. Let's take a little bit more of a detailed look at the progression points outlined for this assessment. These progression points sit at an 8.5 level. They're outlined on the VCAA website. The three of them that I've had a look at to begin with focus on creating and making. For the first point, we have students and the audience of that student to think a little more about what has been achieved for the final product. Ideally, at the end of this assessment, students will need to reflect in a written piece about how they've been able to achieve that result and also what other students have done to achieve different results. The next progression point results such an activity 
needs a lot of planning and thought before the implementation of the actual activity. As such, what can be done with media product needs to be really thought of. So a student needs to think a little more about what's happening before they actually implement the activity. And lastly, as before, reflective thought needs to be clearly considered before jumping into this activity. This needs to be followed by evaluations about their own learning and the learning of other students around them. Lastly, we have one other progression point, and that's still in the 8.5 spectrum. It's under exploring and responding. This follows out as a self-reflection must be performed using appropriate language about the production, not only the equipment, but the technology used. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I am looking forward to seeing you again for the next one. The next topic will be photography, so until then, happy editing. I'm Brent, and welcome to the vlog. This week's topic is film, specifically editing. It won't matter how good or bad, no, 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 I'm not up to that. Yeah.